Um, so um, I want us to just sort of thank to be uh, to uh, be. Where is that information? I just want to thank um, um, Eli, um, the operating system, for bringing us all, all here together um, tonight. And we have um, how many? There, there are four of us who are going to read first as kind of like taste testers, as, as precursors to the to the main event. So I'm going to go through the the um, the plan is, is that I'll introduce everyone to begin with. Um, and then we'll just go from there. Um, but if you require, um, if you require uh, um, subtitles, I just want to direct you to the bottom of the screen. We do have a live transcript. Um, and if you click on the transcript and press subtitles, it will also come up with um, a live captioning so you can follow, follow along as we go. Our first reader tonight is C, who is an interdisciplinary thing maker raised in Tennessee and housed in Brooklyn. They are a member of the Visual Aids Artist Plus Registry and author of the hybrid haunted house print document in Still Rooms, which is a fabulous book also published by the operating system in, on March the 4th, 2020. They have performed or exhibited work and facilitated workshops in various spaces throughout New York City and are currently at work on a collaborative project called Poem For You. I'm going to be reading next. Um, my name is Orica Tierney and I'm a poet and scholar from Aotearoa, New Zealand, who now resides in Little Gambia, Ohio. I'm the author of uh, A Year of Misreading the Wildcats, also published through the operating system, and chat books, uh, My Betris, Ocean Plastic, among many others. And I'm an assistant professor of English at Kenyon College, where I work in garbage, air and methane. Our next reader then will be Michelle Whitaker, who is the author of Surge, Green, Great Weather for Media, which was awarded a finalist medal for the 2018. Which was awarded a finalist medal for the 2018 Next Generation Indie Book Award. She has been published in the New York Times Magazine, New Yorker, Shenandoah, Upstreet, and other publications. Honors include Pushcart Special Mention, Cave Cannon Fellowship, and the 2017 New York Foundation of Arts Fellowship in Poetry. Matthew Geller is a Minnesota-raised queer poet, educator, activist, and artist based in New York City. He received his MFA from the City College of New York, where he also teaches in his free time and he can usually be found on his couch with his cat. Um, I might actually introduce you afterwards, um, Robert, because I want to make sure that you have a special, uh, a special moment where we can just savor your your brilliance. So I'm going to pass it over to C to kick us off. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, just want to echo uh, what Wicked said for sure. Um, big thanks to Eli um, for putting this together uh, and just being like. A force of disruptive joy uh, that is the operating system. Um, and I'm really excited to be here, um, especially with Robert, because this book is rad, as you will see. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lot of like prologue in, um, but I am going to read from uh, this project I'm working on called Poem for You, um, which I accidentally started on a legal pad when I was visiting Matt, actually, who is also reading tonight um last halloween so um i've been writing occasional poems every so often uh from last halloween until now and i will just go until i run out of paper i'm almost there so uh i'm gonna a lot of these are very short so i'm just gonna barrel on through really quickly and just hope you uh hope you enjoy <clears throat> Poem for not having a costume on Halloween 2020. I really wanted to go as hope this year. Oh well. Poem for trying too hard to find the right path. You gotta put your shoes on first, buddy. Not sure what else to tell you. Poem for the end of the day. Call before you get here, okay? See, I told you these were short. Uh, this one's slightly longer. Poem for the rainy way back to the city after Halloween 2020. The surrounding countryside, half scrapped, covered in mist. 23 mile marker, there are fines here for leaving things around on the state line. Point of three points together, welcome to the country. What haven't I collected yet? 
hey, look, there's horses here too. What a world to be driving through a place where there could be horses, a place for them to breathe. Poem for those I hold dear and for those I do not know yet. I love you and will hold myself to prove them that there is a warmness on the way. Poem for all my past and future poems. You will go back into the world, no matter what happens tomorrow, and you will find someone to be there for. Poem for you to wake up in the morning and still have that feeling. Poem for this desk. It's not your fault, all the things I'd rather not do, but while I'm here, I'm gonna need to lean on you. Thank you, tree, for becoming wood, becoming support. Was it worth it? Probably not. Or is worth not a thing where you're from? Anyways, just because I don't know who to thank don't mean I'm not grateful. Poem for looking at things. Oh no, now it's special. Um, I was hoping that Eli would be here because I wrote a poem for them. Um, but uh, that's why we recorded these things, I suppose. And I've already sent it to them, they know it exists, but this is a poem for Eli Moss from the sea. We grow where the wet is cool and warm, sweet goo always recalibrating till chrysalis announces the time. In a dream, we dial down the tempo, even slower. Take time for joy, return them both, sweet and low, and still, I feel you on the branch beside. What do you make of the wind today? Can you feel it too? This new perfume smells like the future. It was never coming. It was always here. Poem for when the gay bars reopen. Would love to say catch me in a harness and my brand new body in the blue electric light my this is my dance floor I fought for a moment, touching everybody on the arms just like this, so gentle on the way to the stalls where I'll be so ready and waiting. But really more like it is I'll find my old corner spot at Julius's by the radiator and the windows with whoever's new book and some curly fries sipping my gay beer warm. If you do see me there, come sit, come over, say hi, we'll make ourselves a plan. Um, and I've only got two more, uh, so thanks for bearing with me. I hope you all uh, are finding something in here, um, even if it's just a chuckle. Um, poem for this house, this neighborhood. You were never really mine. The familiar signs always changing, the wood coming up in the kitchen where so much love was boiled, baked, seasoned, None of it was for always for good, but it was good for always and in all ways. It was good. Thank you for the walls, the hot grate and windows, for the mice even, for the roaches, for all of it. I'll miss you. I really will. Um, and this very last one is, uh, I'm actually not going to give any context. I had like a whole story and I just, I'm, I'm not going to tell it. Uh, it's called Poem for an Anniversary. <clears throat> Today is the first anniversary of me taking my HIV treatment yesterday. Tomorrow, there will be another anniversary of me having taken my HIV treatment today. Anniversaries are times for celebration, commemoration, memorialization, or so I'm told. With so many things having anniversaries, it will be hard to keep up. There will be so many celebrations and all of you are invited, just write down your address. Every single day will be another reason to do a happy action. An hour from now will be the two hour anniversary of this call I was on discussing anniversaries. In a month, I will see my doctor and they will draw my blood for the first time since the last time. How will I ever afford all these decorations? Two months from tomorrow will be the two year anniversary since we all had to learn new capital letters. Gonna throw a big party to commemorate. Everybody will be invited. Nobody will be able to come. 
Can you get here early to help me with the streamers? Will you come to the party every time? You know you are always invited. There are so many places to begin, and what's great about the beginning is it's always beginning. It is always happening again for the first time. Don't be sad if you missed it. There's, there will be another one starting up again soon. I think August will be my five-year anniversary with HIV, or at least when we moved in together. I'm surprised we haven't killed each other too, but what can I say it was meant to be? Right now is the daily anniversary of me not telling you how in love with you being alive I am. That commemoration happens all the time. If I tried to throw those parties, I'd go broke. There would never be enough cake and there would always be too much. Please take some home with you, will you? You can bring it to the next anniversary party. Right this moment is the last moment's anniversary of this moment. Are we having fun at the party or at the moment? I am at this party right now where we are celebrating so much. Nobody really knows what for. Hi, come in, welcome, yes. This is the anniversary party. No, there's not a list, but there is punch. This year is the 40 year anniversary of anyone born in 1981 who is still alive. This year is the 40 year anniversary of anyone who had a baby in 1981, having a baby in 1981. Tomorrow will be the one year anniversary of the last party we threw this time last year. Yesterday was the anniversary of someone very important to someone dying. Today, the dead are not celebrating, but neither are they sad. What are we celebrating again? What, are we celebrating again? Today is the present's anniversary and I have decided to stay at the party. Don't worry about the mess. We'll put all the tables back later. Then we will celebrate the anniversary of putting all the tables back. Will you come to the party every time? You know you are always invited. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sue. I love how your poems move from like the private, um, the intimate private and public intimacies. Um, it's there. Thank you very much for sharing. You're good. Um, I'm going to go next, um, and I'm just going to read a couple of a couple of poems. I think they're self-explanatory, so I'm not going to um, provide any paratext to them. The first poem is called Some Ode, Odor. Methanobacterium arhusence is a salty stretch, a sweet scratch, a bad egg in flatus. In fact, it is a non-motile, mesophilic, halophilic, and phytical filamentous microbe that thrives best at temperatures of 45 degrees Celsius. In 2004, scientists had isolated the strain in marine samples collected from the sediment surface in Aarhus Bay, a waterway on the Danish coast of Jutland. They described their cultivated colonies as circular and grayish, surrounded by a whitish zone. They said these cells are indecisive, straight or crooked, lonely or coupled, filaments or clumpy. They enjoy intimacy to particles, make methane, haunt hydrogen, convert energy, share kinship with similar methogenic archaea. In fact, a novel organism. In fact, microscopic and occultic. In fact, occultic because beautiful but ugly and modern too. Because between five and 18 micrometers long, methane bacterium are liminal and leaky, but not ghost nor spirit, not bond and brine, no more gaseed matter and materialized through the, through the metaphor making of electron microscopes and whiter zones. But however nominal these microbe organisms are, they stay sticky and silent, a small thing, in fact, easily washed away and hidden underneath sediment strata, ephemeral too, because they're nothing like we're something, but ready to cut skins, organs, even rotten eggs, when they quietly surface. This is the narrative, maybe we're born with it, maybe it's methane. In October 2015, the residents of the upscale neighborhood Porto Ranch in San Fernando Valley inhaled bad eggs and clouds. 
Six miles away, the Soquel gas owned Aliso Canyon storage facility experienced a catastrophic blowout, leaking over 97,000 tons of methane into the atmosphere until workers successfully sealed the site in February 2016. Methane imaginary is so slippery. 8,000 residents fled, leaving Porto Rancho ghost town. Two schools shuttered. Organs reported nosebleeds, headaches, vertigo, and respiratory distress. Yes, we know such clouds, some blasts, in fact. Yet methane is an uncanny sink of risk on landfills and cities, factories, refineries, farms, and oceans. After the mother mine explosion, Eliso remains the worst in the country. After the consolidated school of New London explosion, Eliso remains the worst in the country. After the Richmond, Indiana explosion, Eliso remains the worst in the country. After the Cleveland, East Ohio gas explosion, Elisa remains the worst in the country. Before the Belmont County, Ohio blowout, on which the satellite sea shaped data mulched from metaphor, Elisa was the worst in the country. Also Elisa. It is the age of gas lightment, tender human stomachs, burping lakes and cow plumbing. We forget such clouds and rotten eggs folding contours of space and dirt, yet when investigators attributed the axial rupture at Eliso to external microbial corrosions, they found something like we're nothing. In Eliso casings, they collected a whiter zone. In California, they found Arco Bay. And the second poem I'm going to read, uh, when I was living in Philadelphia, um, I became really kind of excited by the coal industry, with the history of the coal industry there. And there's a county nearby called uh, Carbon County, where actually a lot of, um, back at the turn of the 20th century, um, New York was powered by the, by the coal from, from this particular region. Prayer suit. In Carbon County, the Petronauts call to clear the trees for the Penn East pipeline. They say they have concerns about contaminated air and groundwater, mud swamps and wild trout streams, unspoiled brooks to dip their feet in. They say they can safely transport gas as a Muslim of faculty and bring 12,000 jobs to the county. They say they will post no trespassing signs and conduct town hall meetings, distribute angry flyers, build websites and call radio stations to raise public awareness. They say natural gas is green like clean coal and their teams live there. They say they are citizens too, like bald eagles and bobolinks, bobcats and harrier hawks, herons and cormorants whose wetlands and parks are now at risk. They say they will seize private and preserved lands using eminent domain. They say Molly Maguire will fill their chests with smoke and comb, stir up wasp nests and hillocks of black snow because everyone's goal is mine or coal. And they say this is proof of my words that Mark will never be wiped out. This is your house, noticed. You have carried this as far as you can by cheating from a stranger. He knows you. So they prayed. Oh dear Lord, help us stop the pipeline. Amen. Say, now you're cooking with gas. <laughs> and on that note, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm going to pass it to Michelle Whitaker. Uh, hi everybody. Um, that was beautiful. Um, super happy to be here uh, and meet your friends, Robert, that, that's wonderful. Um, I enjoy uh, lots of eco-centric, I'm gonna say, conversations with Robert and it's just so great to be able to talk to people like-minded in, in that way. Um, I always feel inspired at the end of our conversation and so I look forward to your reading. Um, so um, I'll, I'll read a couple poems here. Um, the first one is, uh, can you hear me okay? <clears throat> um, this is called In the, In the Afterlight. 
and it's dedicated to um, my cousin's cousin is uh, Jordan Davis. Um, he was uh, murdered for playing music too loud at gas station. Um, so um, this is for him in the afterlight. What is the speed of dark? Sounds like what is the speed of a black boy or the speed of a stallion beauty turning corners? What about a wild horses barreling down a Moroccan beach? What about a boy not foreign to me who sleeps in their path? What is the speed of dilations, nervous systems, the involuntary hardwired and on the fritz? What is the speed of forcible suspension or the permanent permanency of no return or saying no and meaning no more? Is it like the speed of being chased down? or the speed of light, or the sly of a streaming bullet? Is it like ripping through cells? I actually wish I understood the physics for it sounds like the speed of a bull ramming into windowless matter, almost like the speed of a power outage or powerless and underage. for what is the speed of returning to a dark or closing and opening a wound? Is it like bagging a body? I often wonder what is the sound of the emergent spirit? Does it sing like a lark or spike like a nightingale? Um, and I'll, I'll just end this, I'll just read another, one other poem. Um, Robert, I'll let you pick. I have one that's called Unsound Health and the other called On the Last Day of Unbecoming Us, the both breakup poems. So. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to choose the wrong one no matter what. No, no, you'll choose the wrong one. <laughs> how, about the, how about the first one? Unsound Health. Great. When walking on a boardwalk that enters a park named Anxiety, or the woodsiest wood of the woods, you are then asked if we could talk. Maybe he's thinking about naturalness versus human made, or about the passing jive that moves through this part of the Pamana on this long island on this long walk into the woodsy woods of woods. Maybe he's concerned about a wild turkey pluralizing around the geese, wondering whether we should also cross over into the dangerous blue, dream, blue green algae. Although we are not, although we are semi running, but still not really talking, about the risk into these woodsy woods of darkening coup, remnants of heavenly, as them turkeys continue following, shaking their bulky tail feathers, necks and heads as if they swallowed the skull of their indexes. Their presence is so perfect for spoiling the mood, for saying, keep away, but love me anyhow when watching your lover stride ahead almost half a mile as you fall further back, wanting disrespect but turn into a hex. Thank you. Michelle, I, I love the lines of questioning in both of those poems and how inviting they are. I mean, they, they really like they're really, really engaging. Thank you for those. <laughs> um, <clears throat> should I, uh, should I just, uh, I guess, turn it now to Matt Matthew Goller, um, in whose apartment uh, I wrote some poems, and <laughs> in whose apartment he's about to read some as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, C. Thank you, everybody. Um, hello. Hope you're all doing well that you're safe and healthy as can be. Um, so 
I'm reading something that's kind of old and kind of new. Uh, for the past two months, I've been cutting up my poems and literally like rearranging them, like cutting them up, like printing them out and cutting them up um, just over and over until they're right. And so this is where I am with this. And I was actually uh, really in my head about this today, kind of panicking, like, this isn't ready. This isn't ready to share. Like I, but I didn't plan anything else. And then uh, I logged onto Instagram and um, you know how like Instagram will like recommend friends. Um, it'll be like, you know, so-and-so is on Instagram. This many of your friends follow them with a little follow button. And uh, it was my ex who I actually wrote this about who I unfollowed like forever ago. And I thought, no, that's a sign, right? Like I hadn't thought, like I hadn't seen his uh, profile pop up in a long time. And uh, so I decided, no, tonight's the night to read it. So uh, this piece is titled Best Wishes Always. When I say fuck you, what I mean is this oak silo we share now tastes like death on your side of the Mississippi. What I mean is, I try to write myself a way to stay in your bed. The onion that crawls across the floor like a pigeon in mourning, another shot in the ass to prove noncommittal habits, this exploration in slow motion, always trying to hold on to Ferris wheels in Northeast Minneapolis, the open eyes under the pink lights of youth or the royal crown at the stadium. 300 of our closest friends playing clarinet by the gate. Did you ever think the margins would taste so melodious? But you couldn't commit to horses in the lawn. The roses tangled around your throat. I can't feel the euphoria of silk or the years we have boiled into frost. Can you smell the needles in the wash? The delicate rinse of chainsaws on leaves? The way 16 years ceased to constitute a wingspan in your recollection. A raid of Japanese lilies to ease the sores of slain branches in the park. How many months will you give me if the skyline doesn't kiss us goodnight? How much salt do I need to flush you from my veins? The way air spins sideways in cannons the shreds of pink thistle on your back. Cause I can't tell if I'm supposed to be sitting. Can't feel the pull of string right now. Your name, a thousand small deaths, a porcelain house covered in white dust. An echo of 2003, a question mark on the back of your thumb, two beers and a mosquito on my tongue, highlight of Saturday night. And maybe I'm kidding myself, the way each weekend wilts. And maybe we lie on the tiles as you brush the headache from my eyes. I wanna tear the petals off, but my horoscope says not to act rash. A message lost somewhere in Georgia, 3 a.m., picking, picking lint from the back seat, living between our dots and dashes these rural spaces of language, the evolution of Novocaine and lips. How many hours until antipathy, antipathy bursts into sewage between our palms? How many times can I count the blades of grass in our gums? The last word in a dream of consciousness written on the sleeve of this jacket, goodwill in flames under threat of brake pads boots in the mirror by the door, the last cigarette on a flight to Brazil, the 1,191 miles of Minnesota between us, collapsed lungs through the slits of my fingers, the timbre of your voice at the uptown diner, 15 years of bravado I don't have when the floor falls out. I just wanted that patch of stubble in your kiss, the floral dress last June, the orange afghan in the bootleg laundromat, the way blood colors your cheeks 
like ice under a sunbeam. The white spaces of leaves at your front door. The way your tongue searches for answers in the corner of my mouth. The way this town tastes like pistachio ice cream on the 4th of July. The day after death, legs swollen in the bathtub, eyes spelling out the demise of grace, an opera of burlesque on the dim screen, twisting like wires in the dirt, the rapid drip of glitter in the trees, shifting like crayons in the backyard, this blue-gray stain of humility on the carpet below the skin. And waving like shots of grass, and waving like grass between shots of espresso somewhere in West Virginia, coordinating the route to cheap motel rooms with subway stops along 6th Avenue, the mountains like borders of trees around this Polaroid, the green shirt and frayed jeans you left me in silently praying you'll find your way back to these roots we planted in the ninth grade between the study halls and remodeled art rooms. And the way you hold your choir book in the basement makes me think of the night your hands kept rubbing the stars from the sky. Thank you. I, I have to say also that Matt and I have been there for each other as we cut up and move around so many pieces of paper. I promise we recycle them afterwards, but dear God. <laughs> um, thanks, Matt, Those are, that's, that's wonderful. Um, Orchid, do you want to do you want to do the honors and introduce? Oh, it's up to you if, if you want to. <laughs> I mean, we could read it together, but <laughs> you... I'm just going to geek out if I try. <laughs> OK, well, uh, on that note, then um, let me say that I'm absolutely stoked <laughs> to introduce uh, our, our um, the person that we all want to hear read tonight, um, Robert Ballin, who is an adjunct professor at the City College of New York, where he teaches creative writing and literature and is generally an awesome person. He is the author, sorry, I just added that bit myself. Um, he is the author of the poetry collection Acid Western, yeah, from the operating system, um, Traces Ursus Americanus Press, and his poems have appeared in American Poetry Review, Reality Beach, Powder Keg, Tav Tavrik, Tammy, Prelude, Barrow Street, Opogee, Cosmo Noughts Avenue, and many others. He's also a union delegate for the City College and a PhD student at English at Stony Brook University. I am so stoked to hear you read tonight, Robert. Thank you so much, Orchid. Um, th thanks everybody for being here and, and thank you Orchid and C and Matt and Michelle for, for agreeing to read and uh, it means a lot to me and I I will probably start crying if I say anything more than that. <laughs> um, let's see, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just read from the book and it's great, it's here. And I really wanna thank Eli for doing the cover and uh, you know, doing the operating system and um, you know, putting all of these, uh, connecting all these nodes, so to speak. So I think, um, I'm going to read the the book is basically um, four four long uh, poems, and uh, I'm going to read like three of them, which sounds like a bargain, but it's actually a marketing ploy to to get you to buy the book so you can try to understand it. No, I'm just kidding, um, <laughs> but uh, but that's what I'm going to do. So I will start with the first poem, and it's called um, <clears throat> it's called After Image fell through the portal into all this, this. It's easy to disappear here or there. I don't remember exactly. I eat the dream, years shimmer away, molten time seeping from each being. I don't remember exactly passing through the mountains of cloud, a derelict spacecraft, inertia all day spent looking in the stone corners, pulling up the shadow to get at the time beneath. To try to keep 
the name that drips from a mouth in deltas of cloud and nebulae, heat and sweat, atmosphered, a rippled through memory of the prism of self, slipping to spectrum as light sinks through leaves, drifting in matters of sun and season. To look for futures in the expanse of who I meant to claim to be, in the architecture of the events unfolding its dimensional phase space, the house made of dawn, stormed dusk, collapsing into refracted skylines, into a name that slips into history. You can still hear the music inside peeling, the sun, the excavated legacy, the prayers to the sovereign ego in the static of the live-in desert. In the 12,000 years presence, eyeball grind, weird rain, mutagen, truck routes, flight paths, the loop in the loop in the loop of the making of the making of disaster into spectacle, into the fine edge of a day, the house made of spin and spit, centuries dust, a goddamn it's me like a game show. The morning program runs, iterates <clears throat> into the next, next, into the melted, into the wake up subroutine, wake up, look for traps. What banners will come to cover me? What therapeutic pennies? What taken your hair and hexed it? What portal, what void? What umber decades scattered in atmosphere? What you, what me? In the dispatches, days, years of unstable, the fragility of moments hewn quantum, low bent in the ambient here. Each being passing through, each being slips. You fragment into you a song dissolved in the dawn. So in the book, these next sort of poems, or they're separate individual poems, but I'm just gonna read them as one because um, that's sort of how they, how they run together. Um, so yeah. Fell through the portal into all this, this. I, I don't remember exactly the rest of the beginning I keep seeing you walking through the elusive, operating, <clears throat> oscillating facets of time left in the noise of just now's reverberating visage, <clears throat> glown in a frequency attuned to a brittle, crystalline eye. I drink the cough syrup where I can't take the day off work, where I get paid by the hourly contingency, a contingent where my heart races to seemingly almost bursting, where I drink water from the same cup as I water the plants with, true story, where I say hello to my spider friends, where tomorrow maybe you'll find someplace soft to rest for a while. But here is not a place of honor, all of that for this, a hiding for the fires of the dream to oxidate which doesn't mean the world ceases to fall apart. But maybe if you unspool a logic, there will be a reason for this rendering of thorn, a requirement we can't guarantee. The quick answer is that we must build many more secrets, chambers that we hope to keep hidden from you, the last glow of the energy of our time spent here Maybe it's better to remember to forget forever the question of value of when you become. In the time spent worshiping time in the arranged shipwreck city, a whispering voice in the dark hungers on. In all of this, this, the penitent rush, serpent is Lord, a banner so big the wind couldn't lift it. In the bones on the table, the wilderness of a vast organism. Did we, did we begin the performance of the day's pattern making, spun in the gauzy vision of a radiated light, selling your youth back to you, unfolding it in today, in today? The end of the map looks just like the beginning, 
all of the equestrian statues in every city in the world assembled in the pantheon of triumphant tribunal avenues in the desert of the real. We have emergencies, we have bail bags, we have chimerizations. These were the years. Tell me what my name was. I just wanted to touch my debt, hold the weight of its corpus across my back. The life traps, montage, data's world building, melted memory, dream chewing on my lips. Visions in the scrim, the particle mandala collapsing to return. <clears throat> okay, so this is the last poem. It's uh, <clears throat> it's called Acid Western. <laughs> <clears throat> fell through the portal into all this shadow. I can never remember the rest of the beginning, the memories I keep operating here in the 12,000 year Mesopotamian agrologistic coding history. All these years we've been collapsing in the looped fragments of looping. The morning program runs, the fumes make me light. Excuse me, is today Wednesday? I keep walking through the elusive a frequency attuned to the certified window, the glass coin machine in your station, all droney noise and light. <clears throat> Please come home again. Every day is permeable skin, is documentation, is gravity, is. I keep thinking I see you walking by in the wandering, in the, <clears throat> but I forget many times. I sit around and wait for good news. My yellow grows along my hands and chest. Save your money and die. Is that where I live? Everything sparkles when you fill your head with glass. Light dripping from your fingers. I wander around the front yard, the houses filled with stones. The morning program runs the looped fragments of looping. Excuse me, is today Wednesday. I have been made many substances into and out of phase. Timelines, friction, turns out smoke, all that energy and the day hasn't even begun. The counts, figures, ledgers, atmosphere of slow disintegration, one atom at a time. Body bin, the smoke in my hair, the sports broadcasts, the storefront preacher, the echo in the highway static, the promise of stasis. I forget many times, excuse me, where have I been? When do I wake up brand new? When will I be made clean? I just keep asking for everything. No personality, only an arm driven by a mind that is absent. Send your soul through the ringer for the pennies I let leak into my mouth. A careless appetite like a good assassin. Time gets all fucked up. All the lights crashed and scattered along the street. The smoke of a tenuous life in your lungs, ash on your sleeve, and only a little blood from the teeth today. I was thirsty and died from thirst there. A leaky vessel pushing through the space before it. The spectacular frames, canyons of mist. A bright singing chorus in the ambient. But I forget many times the dream all day, the ambient here. My brain leaks decades of sand and ill-fitted suit in the 12,000 year Mesopotamian present. How far away am I? What kind of money is in my pocket? Maybe this is the hyperobject environment collapsing into my lungs. The geode of the haze rainbows spectrum of particulate shifting through the visions in the scrim. Was I anywhere in my shaky recollection everything all at once again and another day of news and another history's rippling entity of past unfolding the incomplete present. I forget the rest of the beginning. Light keeps shifting to the same mornings. I forget exactly. I flood my mouth with mutagen. I resolve sometimes in the eye kept in synthetic fragrance and smoke. The ads stream by, the ads stare back. I resolve sometimes in the angles of surveillance. Extracted, I own no time in the maze blurred microcosmic works in the agrologistics at the edge of vision. 
in the no place in the only here, <clears throat> only the worn out heels, secondhand shirts, bodies in the bend, de facto designed to be lack in the dissolving collapse, in the regimental medics rummaged in your head, kept phase shifting, looped fragments of looping in the privatization of stress, low bent in the ambient honey drone 21st century centurion, the mirrored photons dripping from the eye, excuse me is today Wednesday, the morning program runs the dissolving collapse, drifting to the future's rendering of thorn. In the dream, in the dream, I am comfortable and clean, cleanly gated. I smell like a hotel room, a targeted marketing marked neuro voider <clears throat> in service of the static dressed up like the bunker life promised. The garbage scows drift by, but I forget many times in the end command, in the military parade of the everyday camouflage, in a facet of a map of infinity inside the ruins, the programming blank was here and, and, and here and here. We can't go home again. That's where they're building the ziggurat. Who gets to be someone anymore? I keep thinking I see you in the uncanny everything in the snuff of stale sweat and piss in the heavy heat in the hyper ruin, the land of magical bullshit, secret Kings and client states dust, sun, pacing, the mythology, the time gathered up and arranged here inside the perfect standards of a pop song, inside the dissolving collapse, the problem of reality here where our lives intersect. Thanks. The end of that poem rattles me every time, Robert. I just need you to know. I love the end of that poem so, so much. Yeah, that's my favorite part. <laughs> I knew it was the ending when I wrote it. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> um, Yeah, I, I don't even, I don't know. I don't, sorry, I'm still like too stunned by the poem to like try to say sentences, but uh, but this is this is a thing now. It's in the world. You can uh, you can have one. <laughs> um, there's a there was a link earlier. I yeah, think. I'll, um, I'll I'll repost that link. Yeah. So um, you can uh, snag this on Bookshop.org, or you can reach out to Robert uh, personally if you'd like a signed copy. Which is always cute. <laughs> um, and uh, eventually, I think also it will be on the open access library um, at the operating system.org as well. Um, so just for my part, I want to say it's been really uh, a joy reading with all of you and, uh, and, and just like being in the space with everybody on the call. So thank you for coming um, to celebrate Robert and this awesome book. Uh, and I don't know what else to say. I'm just I'm happy, happy everybody came. Me too. <laughs> Maybe we could have like a Q and A with her <laughs> to put you to put you on the spotlight. Um, yeah, really, Robert. Yeah, Robert. Yeah, because I think that. What should we I talk? Think, I, I was gonna. I was actually kind of curious what the genesis of this project was. Whether you want to just give us some some context, because when you're reading, I sort of like I could hear sort of um, traces. Um, of deep time and and um, um, uh, Timothy Morton's hyper objects and um, I'm kind of curious about this how scales function in your work so that's a that's a two part question like what's the genesis and then you know how are you bringing these these different scales within within the body of the poem yeah so um, I was reading um, uh, I had been reading sort of like going through Timothy Morton's books and and um, in particular dark ecology where he talks about this idea of agro logistics, which is um, that like capitalism is a loop or that started sort of with the agrarian revolution and, and sort of like has been upgrading itself in different ways, but the kind of like base code of that is remain sort of consistent, you know, essentially like extract and accumulate and and then we wind up sort of here 
Um, so that's where this idea of repetition was coming from. And then um, just thinking about all these, those different scales that you mentioned. So of course, deep time and thinking about sort of ecological issues and, and um, social issues and how they um, move through time in those, you know, and at different scales and different rates and, and persist and things like that. Um, and then also there was sort of the scale of the poem where like, I've never been able to like begin or end a poem very, very well for the most part, like to write these sort of like tight, cohesive like poems. And so uh, I, I just started, I, you know, like, like Matthew was saying, like I started cutting up notes and drafts and, and just arranging them on the floor. And, um, and that's how they kind of came into this like larger, with these larger sequences that, um, worked really well, I think, within thinking about kind of these larger scales of, of climate crisis and, and deep time and, and social crisis and these different things. So Does, was that a good answer? <laughs> Robert. Hi, Jerry. How are you? How you doing, buddy? I'm good, thanks. Some really powerful, dramatic lines. Thank but you. My, my suggestion is oh, okay. <laughs> that you can't read them. You have to deliver them, act them. There's powerful stuff in there and it has to come across with the power behind the words, For emphasis and all that stuff. <clears throat> we'll put together About tomorrow, but I, I think there's some really powerful stuff in there and some heavy stuff but I think it needs the emphasis of the voice and stuff like that. The delivery needs to really be like an actor almost. <laughs> I know, I'll talk to some of my actor friends and see if they can, if they can. Oh, you it. need to, well, I think the word I wanted to use, <laughs> and I didn't use this, you need to perform it because uh, I think it could really come across as very powerful stuff. Robert, we should do we should do an operating system ensemble reading of Acid Western. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that would be pretty fun, actually. <clears throat> we'll have to. Well, we can talk about it. Roseanne, you have your hand up. <laughs> you're muted. You're muted. Hi. Hi. There we Jerry, go. That, that's a very interesting comment Jerry made, even though I, I do think you delivered it beautifully. But this <laughs> idea of it maybe done in sort of chorus and in rounds with some women's voices too could really be fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit about the title and maybe some other titles you struggled with or thought about that might also be appropriate for this work? Um, I never, so like I said, a lot of the poems were sort of, um, I was putting them together as single poems and, and just, they had sort of little titles and, and even the ones that are still single poems in the book, the titles are like fell gallery, where desert, right. They're kind of, um, they might be called labels, I guess. And so I guess I've, that's part of the not being able to begin or end. It's like, um, that's I think carries over to the titles too. <laughs> um, but then uh, I think so like like I sort of said at the end, the, the last few lines were kind of a big, uh, I guess like like an epiphanic, like an epiphany for like <clears throat> I was like, oh okay, like now I know how it ends and that's that's like a like an anchor, right? And then um, the title was also kind of an anchor that I think helped um, convey or conceive of it as a collection. And so acid Western is like a subgenre of the Western where it, it was like these uh, Westerns that were being made, started being made in the sixties and, and then through, you know, there's still some happening now and again um, where they were sort of, uh, you know, uh, anti-Westerns, right? So the, the, the typical American Western is, um, uh, ex extremely, you know, racist and problematic and and uh, genocidal, right? So these were trying to sort of undo the glorification of that. And um, I just had stumbled across the um, 
<clears throat> the the like Wikipedia page for this genre. And I was like, oh, that's that sounds pretty cool. I should title it that. <laughs> and so, um, but but also because like the thing, the things that would wind up being the book were resonating with the things that that genre is, uh, you know, is trying to do. So, um, so that was part of it, yeah. And then also I think the way that the poems are sort of, um, yeah, the way that the poems work together, I think resonates there as well. <laughs> I was just thinking, actually, let me just, um, I, I, um, I know if I show this with my background filter, you won't be able to see it, but I was actually thinking when you're reading of Remainders, I don't know whether you've read this book. Um, I, I need to read it. It's, yeah. It's, author? It, this, the author is Margaret Rhonda. Um, and it has um, the introduction is called the Great Acceleration Poetics, and so as you're reading, just part, partly because of the acid acid Western genres sort of focus on auto destruction, <laughs> um, I think it has some intersections um, um, with the kind of kind of scholarly th thinking that your that your collection is doing. And the other one is I don't know if you've read this one yet, Anthropocene. Um, Poetics, um, Deep Time, Sacrifice, Zones, and Extinction by um, David Barry, Barrio. Um, that might also be something to. I, um, yeah, I had, uh, I wanted to read the Rhonda book, but uh, the library didn't have it and it was yeah. like $80, <laughs> so I couldn't yeah. buy it. Yeah. I did just, I lied to this press and told them <gasps> I was thinking about teaching this book. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good book. Yeah. I wanted to read that. That's <laughs> so funny. And and that's exactly Orchid, the kind of thing that uh, that I you know worked with Michelle on um, this past semester at Stony Brook, and that was um, you know really uh, uh, what's the word? Um, I mean, yeah, just just to to be perfectly honest, the highlight of my semester, uh, my first semester at Stony Brook, we're working with Michelle and and. Uh, in, in that course that we did so yeah <laughs> no, I think it's I think you're doing something really interesting and exciting to be honest because you're working at you're using the poetic form as a way to advance the scholarly conversation um which is why I also liked your your talk that you gave at the MLA um was that it was seemed clear to me that you're thinking about those questions and thinking how well how does the poetic form um advance the kinds of ecological questions that are so um, with us right now. And so I think that's why, you know, I think that's really unique in many respects because not many people can pull that off. <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely um, like this, the things that I was talking about in and sort of, you know, like I came to poetry before I came to like go do this more scholarly work and, you know, the PhD program. But those are the things that I'm interested in on the one side of things are like we're completely informed by sort of thinking about poetics and sort of how does poetics or poetry respond to this, you know, the contemporary crises and the the, the changes that or the, uh, I don't want to say changes because they've been there for a very long time, but like the revelations that become more and more apparent, right? Yeah, it was a, it was a tough question, like, um, that I've been asking myself too lately of like, how, you know, how to do poetic work that is some way valuable or in service to like whatever moment we're in um and i think that i'm finding my own answer but it's really heartening to like consistently read your work and and like see very concretely like oh here's a way <laughs> here's here's one way so maybe hopefully <laughs> no maybe no modest <laughs> I think I think everyone that you've chosen to read here is doing that kind of critical thinking using the poetic form, um, which is really, really quite exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think, um, you know, I'm glad that I know all of you and <laughs> that you all agreed to read. <laughs> <clears throat> Robert, yes. I was just curious about the cover art, if, if you don't mind talking about that a little bit. Yeah, so this, cool. this was, sorry, what was that, Michelle? 
No, I really like it. Oh, so want. that's all Eli. And um, so I hope Eli will uh, go back through this video and, and get all the, the accolades, right? Um, so yeah, uh, part, of, part of the way that the operating system does covers is that Eli does pretty much all the covers um, for the most part. Um, but they will also send you kind of like a design thinking like uh, prompt. And so you can, um, you know, put different things in there. And so like, uh, we had talked specifically sort of about, about like colorways and different things like that. And so like, this is kind of a funny story, but like I, there was like these shoes that had really nice colors that I really liked. So I put those in the document and that was like part of the design thinking. Um, but the but the image itself is um, uh, there's a little explanation too in the book and it's uh, an aerial photo of the California aqueduct at the Interstate 205 crossing. Um, the photos by Ian Kluth and it's um, a close crop of the dual mirrored paths of the aqueduct system moving through the state's dangerously dry farmland grid, textured and colorized in super saturated tones suggesting an altered dystopic retro future. Um, and then the uh, the uh, font is like sort of like a like a retro or like a retro digital um, like kind of video game, like 8-bit sort of text. But then it also, I don't know, like it has these little, the, the design of it also sort of um, feels very like textile in a lot of ways too. Um, but but yeah, I think that the, the cover, uh, I think the cover and and with the font sort of speaks to the content of the book as well too and sort of I don't know how stuck we are sort of in between the past and the future right and and you know that that's not exactly what the present is right but we're sort of it's that endless looping of looping yeah <laughs> which we are stuck in <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Tony Lee. Any other questions? It's better than my classes because people have their cameras on. Yeah. <laughs> are you, how, how are your classes going? They're they're going well. Um, I don't require my students to have their yeah. cameras, so I I literally. Yeah. Two classes where none have their cameras yeah. on, and two <laughs> classes where like four have their cameras on. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> Do they respond in other ways? I'm like the same. I don't require. Yeah, I got a few who love to like use the chat and just yeah. talk on the chat, and then I got a few who, who uh, respond, you know, speak, speak even though their cameras are off. I think they're exhausted. <clears throat> yeah, it's, you know, it's weird. <laughs> I had one student, this was the funniest, <clears throat> they came to my office hours and exclusively used the chat. They didn't have their camera on or their audio on, <laughs> and they only used the chat. I was like, all right, well, that, that works for you. <laughs> are, they in, are you in person? You're not, do you have any in-person classes? No, no, no. Uh, we're online, and then it's up in the air if we're going to be in person in the fall. Yeah. We, yeah. I've asked my students if they're not going to use their videos, which is fine, to like at least like upload a cute like picture of themselves or something. <laughs> and like I guess what that translated to to all of my students is picture of my pet. Got it. <laughs> cool. Here's my dog. <laughs> here's my parakeet. Here's my fish. Uh, here's my bullfrog. And I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> I had a student who had two parakeets and he would like show them to us. I would always ask him like, are your birds there? Can you show us your birds? <laughs> Good. Are you in person too, Sue? No, but I mean, who knows about the fall? Yeah. <clears throat> Anthony, do you have any questions? Anthony's uh in my cohort at Stony Brook as well. 
to put you on the spot. Yeah, I knew Robert um, as the <laughs> scholar. This was the first time I've ever heard his poetry. <laughs> I'm glad I came through. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Anthony. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> well uh we can go have dinner if you haven't had dinner yet that's fine <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i'll uh, i'll have a drink for you here robert How's that? <laughs> okay i'll see you soon then sweet. all right thank you again everybody thank you so much um thank you congratulations <laughs> robert <Yeah>. congrats <laughs> Enjoy, celebrate. Big congratulations. Thanks. 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 I didn't fix my hair today, so I didn't have the video on. Uh, <laughs> here, right? You're like, I'll give you a wave. <laughs> anyway, thank Bye. you so much. This was a great event. Great. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll stop recording.